Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. So today we're talking about Palantir and spoiler alert, I really like this stock. Before we begin, as always, referral links are down below if you want to sign up for Wealth Simple Trade, where you can get a free $10 when you invest your first $100. Uh, there's also referral links down below for Newton and ShakePay, which are both platforms that I use to buy crypto here in Canada, and I found them both to be really simple to use, uh, and I haven't had any problems or anything so far. So uh, the sign-up bonus for those are $25 and $30, respectively, for Newton and ShakePay, uh, which you will get after you buy your first $100 worth of crypto. Okay, so on to today's topic. Before I get into the reason why I'm so bullish on Palantir, uh, let's get into what they do because that's not entirely clear, okay? So uh, according to Yahoo Finance, Palantir Technologies builds and deploys software platforms for intelligence community uh, in the United States to assist in counterterrorism investigations and operations. Uh, it also offers Palantir Gotham, a software for government operatives in the defense and intelligence sectors, which enables users to identify patterns hidden deep within data sets ranging from signal intelligence sources uh, to report them to uh, confidential informants and facilitates a handoff between analysts and operational users. Okay, so I'm not going to read the rest of those. It's really long, but essentially they're like they aggregate uh, and analyze data and then they help uh, people like find patterns in the data. So basically at the end of the day, what it means is that it provides the software and data analytic solutions to help in a variety of different ways and you can use it for uh, a bunch of different purposes, right? So uh, they are mainly working with the US government, but they are also expanding out and working with private enterprises. Uh, so uh, they're expanding out to uh, like working with companies. So in fact, uh, Fiat Chrysler has been using Palantir for a long time to help them find potential faults in the cars that they manufacture. Uh, and they also have this contract with JP Morgan, uh, which is used to find employees who have potentially gone rogue and maybe like doing things that they shouldn't be or trading without permission and things like that. Uh, recently, they've also partnered with IBM on this new software solution called Palantir of IBM Cloud Pack. Uh, so this is supposed to integrate things like cloud processing uh, and AI, and they use AI to aggregate data and make it uh, so that it's really easy to analyze data. Uh, so it's hard to keep track of all these different companies that Palantir has partnerships with, so there's a lot. So I think that there's also a 3M partnership announcement uh, recently. So uh, they have contract with companies like BP as well. Uh, it seems like every week there's a new announcement, so uh, obviously I'm not gonna go through every announcement of every partnership, because that's gonna take the whole video. Uh, so if you wanna deeper understanding of Palantir though, all you have to do is look at the name, right? So uh, for those of you who are not aware, uh, the name Palantir comes from Lord of the Rings. Uh, so in the books and in the movies, a Palantir is what's called a seeing stone. Uh, so the seeing stone is this like crystal which has magical abilities to enable the user to communicate with people through long distances uh, and it also enables the user to like see into the future. Uh, so uh, that's the idea anyway. So instead of using like magic, like in the books, uh, the uh, Palantir that we're talking about today, like the company, they use computer code, right? So they use mathematics and computer code and statistics uh, to help you find patterns and analyze big data uh, in ways that are not obvious uh, and ways that are not easy without using their software. Uh, so that's the best I can do to kind of explain what they do. Uh, and to be completely honest, I don't 100% understand what they do either because it's pretty complicated to like wrap your head around. Uh, but what I will say is that I've interfaced uh, a lot or interface, interacted a lot with computer scientists uh, and uh, data science people when I was at the University of Waterloo. Uh, although I wasn't in like any of those programs, uh, I have talked to a lot of people who have gone on to have careers in those aspects. Uh, and they have all been telling me like all throughout university and throughout like their career now that, uh, you know, they've tried to apply for internships uh, at Palantir. And it's actually a lot harder to get into Palantir than even something like an Apple or a Google. Uh, so one thing you got to keep in mind about Palantir is that this is a very old company, okay? So uh, even though they just did their IPO last summer, Palantir was founded in 2003, so that was like 18 years ago. Uh, so they've been private this whole time up until last summer. Uh, so the original founder of Palantir is the famous Peter Thiel, 
Uh, and if you guys don't recognize that name, he was the founder of PayPal and sort of the leader of what's called the PayPal Mafia. So the PayPal Mafia were the original kind of top people at PayPal, which includes Elon Musk, by the way, uh, so who's also part of that group. Uh, but there's also other famous people who have uh, gone on to found other famous companies that uh, products that we all use and love every day, uh, such as LinkedIn, YouTube, Yelp. Uh, so they were all founded by the PayPal Mafia members. So why am I bringing this up though? Uh, well, let's talk a bit about the valuation and the revenue growth for a second for Palantir because uh, this company is no doubt a high flyer in the stock market right now. So uh, it's more than doubled since its IPO and that's factoring in the recent pullback that we've seen in tech. Uh, so if you look at valuation metrics in forward PE and price to sales ratio and whatnot, this company looks insanely overvalued, right? You'd be like, there's no way I'm buying this company at these prices. Uh, however, I think that this is one of those situations where you shouldn't get too caught up in the valuation metrics. Uh, and I mentioned how I made this mistake personally with Shopify back in the day uh, when the stock just looked super overvalued because I was solely judging it through um, like forward PE and price of sales and whatnot. So I ended up selling Shopify at like $900 a share and then it just like uh, blew past 1000 immediately, right? It just kept on climbing higher and higher. Uh, so I think that this is a similar situation. So if you look at Palantir, uh, it grew 47% year over year for the full year of 2020. Uh, so this is very impressive if you consider that the company has been around for 17 years at that point. Uh, and they're still able to grow revenue at almost 50% after being around for 17 years. Uh, so if you look at these expectations, they, uh, they're they expected to keep up this insane pace of growth in the next few years as well. So yeah, of course the stock will carry a premium, right? It deserves to carry a premium. It shouldn't trade like it's like, a, I don't know, Ford or Chrysler or something, right? Uh, so if you've been waiting for the valuation metrics to kind of go down into the bargain bin, well, that's probably not gonna happen. Uh, so if you look at a company like Amazon, for example, right? Amazon's always traded rich. So if you've been waiting for Amazon to go into the bargain bin, that's not gonna happen, right? So you would have missed out on this insane run on Amazon stock uh, as well. So I think that this is a very similar situation where a company, yes, it does trade rich, uh, such as Palantir, it does trade rich, but it kind of deserves to trade rich. Uh, so I wanna spend a little bit more time as well talking about the CEO of Palantir, Alex Karp. Uh, so I've seen several interviews of him uh, and just videos of him speaking. And let me tell you, this guy is a genius. I think he's like, his IQ is like above 160 or something. But uh, I saw a video of him talking about Palantir's future. Uh, and I was like, whoa, he's kind of like a philosophical guy. It's hard to describe it. I'll link the video down below in the description. And I highly recommend you guys check out that video and go watch it for yourself. But yeah, I was doing some research on Alex Karp's background. Uh, and I came across this post on Quora, which is this forum discussion website. It's like kind of like Yahoo Answers, but it's better. Uh, so someone posted this comment about how Alice Karp conducts interviews and it's very interesting. Uh, so uh, take it with a grain of salt because it's just a random post from Quora, but I'll read you apparently some of what Alex Karp said about his strategy when interviewing people. Uh, so Alex Karp says that, uh, I like to meet candidates with no data about them, no resume, no preliminary discussions, no job description, just the candidate and me in a room. Uh, I ask fairly random questions, one that is ortho orthogonal to anything uh, that they would be doing at Palantir. So orthogonal means like at right angles. So like orthogonal just means that like uh, he's asking questions that has nothing to do. That's completely kind of the opposite of, uh, of what they would be doing at Palantir, just nothing to do with their job, uh, just to see how they react to those questions. Uh, so then uh, he says, I then watch how they disaggregate this uh, question. Uh, if they appreciate how many different ways there are to see the same thing. Uh, I also like to keep interviews short, about 10 minutes. Otherwise people move into learned responses and you don't really get a sense of who they are. So uh, he's obviously, I think that this strategy is like pretty insane, uh, right? Cause this is like, or not insane, but like pretty atypical. Uh, so 
uh, this strategy kind of like is his way of boiling down like what the best candidates are for a job. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, things like this really make it hard for anyone to like get into Palantir and work there. So I don't know if you guys know anyone that works for Palantir, uh, but I think that you got to really be something special because even like my peers at University of Waterloo, I don't know anyone that actually ended up uh, getting a job at Palantir. Uh, I know people that ended up getting jobs at like Google or Apple or Microsoft, but not Palantir. Uh, so yeah, anyways, uh, I thought this was very interesting. Uh, with all this in mind though, I have been buying this stock pretty heavily because I really do believe that this could potentially be one of those like 10x potential opportunities in my mind. Uh, so this company is trading at just about a $40 billion valuation right now. So uh, I can definitely see this company being a $400 billion company in the future. Uh, now it's hard for me to put a specific timeline, but you know, 5, 10, uh, 20 years from now, you know, like... It's hard to see past 10 years to be honest, but like 10 years from now, I can definitely see this being a $400 billion company. Uh, if the company continues to perform the way that it is, uh, there's massive potential in this field because uh, this is what I like to call a green field space, right? So imagine just, you know, a green field, right? So uh, this is an industry that's just getting started and the possibilities and use cases for data analytics solutions uh, it's almost limitless, right? It's only going to get bigger. Uh, in fact, the next 10 years or so, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the next trillion dollar company. So I know that sounds about insane right now because it's $40 billion and it's going to like I'm saying that 10 years it might go to $1 trillion. But, you know, 10 years is a really long time. Uh, and if you look at the total addressable market of what Palantir is doing, it's hard for me to pinpoint a number. I don't know what the total addressable market is, to be honest, uh, off the top of my head. But I can guarantee is probably going to be really huge. Uh, so for my own positions, I essentially threw my entire Quest Trade account at it. Uh, so as I said, I was previously going to use the Quest Trade account for options trading, uh, but RBC actually enabled options uh, trading on my direct investing account now. So I can just buy options with RBC. Uh, and I had a lot of spare cash left in my Quest Trade account. Uh, so that's why I use my Quest Trade account. So right now it's the only position in my Quest Trade account. So yeah, if you look at my Quest Trade, it's going to say that Palantir is like 98% of my portfolio. Uh, but keep in mind that this is just like a fun account. Uh, so this account has a lot less money in it compared to uh, like my main account. So I didn't actually like go all in on Palantir. Uh, I went all in on this account, if that makes any sense. Uh, so I also bought the stock uh, way too early, as you can see. So I'm down like 30%. But as I said, this is a long term hold uh, and I'm not worried at all. So I could have easily been just up 30%, right? So if I had been a little bit more patient and waited out and like, dollar cost average a little bit more slowly, uh, I probably would have gotten a better average price, but like, oh, well, I don't really care, right? Because if I think that this is gonna be the next 10X opportunity, does it really matter if I bought in at $30 a share or $40 a share or $20 per share, right? Like it's gonna, if it goes to like, you know, $300 per share, right? So uh, it won't matter that much uh, at the end of the day. And if the stock stays at current levels, I might even average down even more. Like I said, I just, I really like the stock. What can I say, right? Maybe I'm the DFV of Palantir now. So uh, maybe some of you who've been watching Wall Street Bets or following the GameStop story, you guys know that reference. Other people might be like, what is he talking about? Anyways, I'll leave the video here. Be sure to give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you like the series. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, links down below in the description as always. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.